projectiles at an angle is when life gets infinitely more complicated, okay? So this occurs when an object has both initial x velocity and initial, initial y velocity. So remember, we just went over horizontal projectiles. So that's if it's just being thrown horizontally and then starts going down as well. So what if something's being thrown up at an angle and is kind of taking this sort of... Um, motion. Well then our initial velocity here has some x and y components, right? Because it's going up at an angle. So again, one thing remains the same from horizontal projectiles. Vx does not change, okay? So remember, something acceleration it accelerates if it's being pushed or pulled. There's nothing pushing or pulling in the x direction, okay? Nothing are pushing or pulling it horizontally. In the y direction, however, uh, there, it is being pushed. It's put, being pushed down towards the ground by gravity. So we have acceleration due to gravity. So that's one nice thing. We know that my uh, velocity in the x direction is not changing, but my velocity in the y direction absolutely is. Okay? So the velocity at any point along the motion is always the vector sum of x and y. What the heck does that mean? Well... Basically, it means, you know, we have our x velocity, velocity in the x direction, um, and it'll be so much. And then our velocity in the y direction, initially, you know, if it's going up, it'll, you know, be so much. And so the vector addition of that looks like this, okay? It's the hypotenuse of that, because the vector addition, or the vector for the actual velocity of it, is that. So this is the actual velocity of the object. And then we can just kind of break it down into its x and y velocity, saying, okay, well, the x is going to be the same because it's not being pushed or pulled here, but the y velocity is changing. So that's what I mean. That's the actual velocity of the thing is always the hypotenuse of those two things put together of the x and y. So if I want to know the actual velocity, then I need to find the uh, hypotenuse of this kind of triangle, okay, of the x direction, the y direction, and all that fun stuff, okay? And of course, it'll always be at some certain angle, so we'll always need to find, you know, the angle at which it is above the horizontal. So this, again, is what a projectile at an angle looks like. So what I want to do is I want to go through and say what exactly is happening at each point, okay? So let's start at A, at point A. So I know that we have some sort of uh, horizontal velocity, so we'll call that Vx, okay? And then it has a bit of vertical velocity as well because it's that's what it's been given. So if I move this vertical vector over, it looks something like this. Okay, so here's my velocity, initial velocity in the x direction. Here's my initial velocity in the y direction. Okay, so if I move them to make them look, look like this, here's my actual velocity. Okay, so to find that, I can do a Pythagoras on that and find the hypotenuse. Okay, but what has happened at B? Well, Gravity's slowed this down a little bit, hasn't it? Because it's pushing downwards. Has it slowed it down in the x direction? Does gravity work horizontally? Absolutely not. So my velocity in the x direction should look pretty much the same, but my velocity in the y direction will definitely be smaller because, again, gravity's pushing down on it. It's slowing it down as it goes upwards and to the right. So at B, it looks something like this. Okay, where it's the same triangle, but it's just not quite as tall. So if I want to know the actual velocity of the ball at B, again, I need to find the hypotenuse, or the vector sum of Vx and Vy. Now what's going to be happening at C? This is at its tallest point. So remember from horizontal projectiles, when it was just going horizontal, was there any Y velocity? Absolutely not. And the same thing's happening here. This is when it's changing its y velocity, right? So my x velocity is going to look about the same, except for the problem that is that I just drew an arrow that was much bigger than the other two that I drew for the x direction. So let's try that again, because it should be about the same length as those two. Uh, because again, 
it's going to be constant throughout this, the thing. The x directional velocity is going to be constant. But at this highest point is where we have no motion in the y direction, right? Because the y direction is going from upwards to downwards. It's changing its direction. So that's the point at which it just instantaneously, for a small instant, goes to zero. So at C, that's going to be really important. We know that there is no velocity in the y direction because, of course, that means it's at its maximum height. So that's going to be really important to us um, to be able to analyze the maximum height. Okay? Let's talk about it way down now. So at D, what the heck is happening? Well, again, like I said, x is the same throughout its, its whole motion. So the velocity in the x direction is exactly the same. And now, of course, the y, velocity in the y direction is heading downwards. Okay, so that'll be the same um, y velocity as at point A, which is nice. Okay, so that's really, really important to note. So again, just a little note here. Um, this velocity here is the same as this velocity here. This guy is just negative, okay? So we'll go over a few situations in which it only goes from A to D, and knowing that, that the initial y velocity and the final y velocity are equal and opposite is gonna be really, really important, okay? So we'll go over some, like, so that's, for example, if you're kicking a soccer ball, that's exactly the motion it takes, right? It goes up from the ground, it goes back down to the ground, and so it stops at point D, and so that makes life a lot easier and a little bit nicer, okay? But then we'll go over some situations in which it's going to go all the way down here. Okay, so what's happening at E? Is the x velocity the same? Of course it is, because again, there's no push or pull in the x direction, so my x velocity is always the same. But what's happened to my y velocity? It's gotten much, much bigger, okay? Because as it falls, y velocity is going to get much bigger. It's just going downwards now instead of upwards, okay? And so if I want to find the velocity at point E, this would probably be the final velocity of, of the object's motion. I would need to, again, use Pythagoras to find the hypotenuse of this triangle. Okay, so that's how we have to break this up for projectile motion at an angle. So we always need that angle. That angle is going to be really important to us. So just a little bit of refresher from uh, trigonometry because now we're going to really need to use it a lot okay so if you're given velocity just this guy and the angle i can find the velocity in the x direction the velocity in the y direction okay i do that by setting up my cos and sine uh, ratios because again i do have the hypotenuse so we don't really care about tan here and then we can rearrange for velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction, okay? So you're going to see me just jumping to there from now on. I'm not going to actually set up this whole ratio and then rearrange because it just ends up being too much work, okay? So you'll see me jumping right to there. So we know, of course, the x velocity is in the adjacent side. Y velocity is in the opposite, so that's why we use cosine for x and sine for y, okay? Another thing, of course, that you need to remember, if you want the hypotenuse, and we have vx and vy, um, then we can just use Pythagoras, or if you really want to, you can use, um, or no, you can use Pythagoras for the uh, velocity, and then you do need to find the angle, okay? If it asks for final velocity, velocity is a vector, Remember that, so it means give me the magnitude and the direction. So if I want to find direction, I need to find the angle. So I use tan of theta in that case, and it gives me the angle at which it's going. Okay, so let's try a couple of these because it's definitely not uh, too straightforward. So we do want to do, uh, actually, I'm actually only going to do one because um, there's only so much I can show you, and then you really just need to get your hands dirty and just get into it. Okay, so we have a shot putter, 
throwing a shot with an initial velocity of 14 meters per second at 40 degrees to the horizontal. Okay, I'm just going to stop right there. I'm going to draw my lo lovely little vector diagram. Okay, so 40 degrees to the horizontal. So if my horizontal is that way, that would be this right there. Okay, because there's the horizontal, so it's, they're going 40 degrees above that. And there's my y vector. Oh, that needs to be a little bit longer. Okay, and we know it's 14 meters per second, initial velocity. So the question is, is that the x velocity, the y velocity, or is that just the hypotenuse? Well, it didn't say with an initial x velocity or horizontal velocity. It didn't say with an initial vertical velocity. So you can go ahead and assume that's this one. Okay, unless it specifically says this is the horizontal velocity or the vertical velocity, we know this is just the hypotenuse. Okay, so we're going to calculate the horizontal distance traveled by the shot if it leaves the athlete's hand at a height of 22 meters above the ground. Okay, so what else do we know? We know the initial velocity, of course, is 14, but we also know that the displacement in the y direction. Since we're now going back to going up and down, I'm going to go ahead and say down is negative. So my displacement is actually negative 2.2 meters. Okay, because it's leaving the athlete's hand at a height of 22. So think about that. Here's the athlete. Okay, and they're throwing it. It's up here and it's going like this and then it's coming back down to the ground. Okay, so it didn't leave the athlete's hand until a height of 2.2 meters above the ground. So therefore, that's the, its displacement in the y direction has to be negative 2.2 because it's going to be ending up 2.2 meters below where it started. Okay, so keep that in mind. Um, and then we know we, of course, have an acceleration in the y direction of course, of negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so we got that. It doesn't look like we have a lot to go off of, but I promise we have a lot more than you think. Okay, so just trust me here. Because the thing is, it did give us this initial velocity, um, but what we need to do is, of course, we need to um, have the y and x directions. Okay, I know... I want the horizontal distance. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for distance in the horizontal direction. So if I know I'm looking for distance in the horizontal direction, there's only one equation I can use in the horizontal direction. V is equal to D over T. Now, I, can, I don't actually currently have velocity in the X direction. I can e find it pretty easily. I do not have time. I do not have distance. And that's what I want to find. So all right, the first thing we always want to try and find is time. So I should probably find time in the vertical direction and then go to the horizontal and be able to find the distance. Okay, so what do we have to do first? Anytime you have a triangle like this, the first thing you should really do is find the initial y velocity and the x velocity, okay? So that's what we're gonna start by doing, is we're gonna find velocity in the y direction and velocity in the x direction. Now, really important, remember, in the y direction, it's the initial velocity because the velocity in the y direction is changing. So remember, I take the hypotenuse and I multiply this one by sine of 40 because it's on the opposite side. Okay, so that gets me initial y velocity of 9.0 meters per second. And then I'm going to find my velocity in the x direction, and that is going to be 14 meters per second. Oops, I'll just put meters over here. Uh, times cosine of 40, because again, that's the adjacent side. And that gets me a velocity of 11 meters per second. So remember, I'm just writing those down, but keep those full values for the future because we are going to use them. Okay, so again, let's just kind of sort out what we have. Specifically in the y direction, because like I've already figured out, we're going to go to the x direction last. We're going to end there. So let's just figure out what we have in the y direction. Firstly, we know that my initial velocity in the y direction is 9 meters per second. 
What else do we know? We figured out that that displacement in the y direction was negative 2.2 meters. And we also know, of course, our acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So that's the information I have for the y direction. And so I want to find time. That's kind of what I'm going for here. So if I look at all my equations, we're going to go all the way back to here. Um, look at my equations. Is there anywhere where I can find time? So with horizontal projectiles, I went ahead and just used that for time. But remember, there was something special, and that was where that was zero. Is my initial y velocity zero now? It's not. And so I have time in two places. I can't get it down to one place, so that sucks. So can I use this one? No, it has final velocity. We don't have that. Can I use this one? Well, I could use it to find final velocity, but it doesn't have time. So let's see if we can just go right to finding time first. Can I use this one? Nope, final velocity. I don't have that. Can I use this one? Nope, final velocity. I can't use that one either. Okay, so looks like we have to use this one first to find final velocity, and then I can find the time. I'll probably go to this one to find the time. Although I could also use that one to find time, but I just find that this guy easier to uh, rearrange. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So, okay, we got our plan. We have to find the final velocity in the y direction first, and then we can find the initial velocity. Or I mean the time. Okay. So we've got to go through all this stuff. Oh my goodness. So many things. Okay. So let's do that. We're going to use vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2ad to find my final velocity first. Okay, remember this is the final velocity in the y direction. So that'll be the square root of vi squared. So that was 9.0 meters per second squared plus 2 times my acceleration, negative 9.81 meters per second times my displacement, negative 2.2 meters. Okay, now my final velocity then is 11 meters per second. That's just a fluke that it's the same one as the x direction. It never works out like that. One quick question though. Remember, this could be positive or negative. Is my final velocity positive or negative? Here's my initial velocity. It's going right and upwards. Here's my final velocity. It's going right and guess what? Oh, downwards. So therefore, the final velocity in the y direction needs to be negative. Okay? So there we go. We have our final velocity in the y direction. Now we can use that to find time. Okay, so I'm not even going over to the x direction yet. I know it's kind of crazy. So remember, we're going to use this one to find time. Just because it's easier to arrange, I find. Okay, so there we go. And I can plug in the numbers here. Okay. Remember, those signs are so important. 11 minus 9 is a different question than negative 11 minus 9. And we get a time of 2.1 seconds. Oh, finally. Some information we can use to finally actually get the answer that we want, the final answer, which was our horizontal distance traveled, right? We want to figure out what is this guy right here? How far did it travel horizontally? That's all I want to know. And there's so much work to get there. Okay? But hey, welcome to physics. So let's talk about this. So what I'm going to say right is positive, even though that's really the only direction I have. And I didn't even know if it was to the right, but I just assume because that's how we read stuff is going to the right. So I know distance in the x direction is equal to velocity times time. Get that from v equals d over t, of course. So remember, I'm going back to my velocity in the x direction, which was 11. 
has nothing to do with the fact that the final velocity in the y direction was 11. That's a fluke that it ended up that way. So never think that those two are related. Okay. So that's 11 meters per second. And my time was 2.1 seconds. And I get a distance in the x direction of 22 meters. Okay. So I know, I know, I know. Not easy at all. And this is honestly, this is the, the hardest projectile motion question. Because this is one where it ends further down than where it started. So anyone where it's like that is going to be even worse. Okay? So just remember, it, when you're going through your um, examples, you'll run into a few where it goes up and goes down to the back down to the same height. Okay? Those ones are a little bit easier because remember, the y velocity there is equal to uh, the y velocity over here, but this is just negative. Okay? So remember, those velocities are the same, but just opposite signs. Okay? So that makes your life just a teensy bit easier. So when you're doing that kind of thing, um, it's a little bit easier. So I decided, no, I'm just going to go right to going over the most complicated example here and show you that. So then the other ones, you know, will practically look easy and be effortless. Obviously, I'm joking. They will not be effortless at all. It takes a lot of thinking. It takes a lot of being on your toes and making sure you know what's going on. So good luck with practicing that. But like I said so many times before, you just got to practice. You just got to do a bunch of examples. Okay, so go do some work.